CNN's CEO is making staff churn out Israel propaganda. One of the noblest and most important things a Western journalist can do these days is help expose the propagandistic manipulations of the mainstream Western press institutions who have duped our civilization into consenting to a profoundly dysfunctional status quo which does not serve the interests of normal human beings. Unfortunately, this rarely happens, because Western journalists tend to view the mainstream press as allies and potential employers. This happens to be one such rare occasion, and it happened in one of the last places you'd probably have guessed if you follow mass media propaganda with a critical eye. The Guardian has a great new article out titled CNN Staff Say Network's Pro-Israel Slant Amounts to Journalistic Malpractice by a guy named Chris McGreal, who cites multiple CNN staff members and internal documents to reveal the immense top-down pressure in the network to tilt coverage heavily in favor of Israel. McGreal writes the following, quote, CNN is facing a backlash from its own staff over editorial policies they say have led to a regurgitation of Israeli propaganda and the censoring of Palestinian perspectives in the network's coverage of the war in Gaza. Journalists in CNN newsrooms in the U.S. and overseas say broadcasts have been skewed by management edicts and a story-approved process that has resulted in highly partial coverage of the Hamas massacre on the 7th of October and Israel's retaliatory attack on Gaza. The majority of news since the war began, regardless of how accurate the initial reporting, has been skewed by a systemic and institutional bias within the network toward Israel, said one CNN staffer. Ultimately, CNN's coverage of the Israel-Gaza war amounts to journalistic malpractice, end quote. McGreal's sources say CNN's wildly biased coverage of Israel's assault on Gaza is the direct result of edicts from the network's new CEO, Mark Thompson, who assumed his role two days after the 7th of October attack. From 2012 to 2020, Thompson was the president and CEO of the New York Times, which is currently experiencing its own internal strife due to the pro-Israel bias of that outlet. Before his New York Times executive gig, Thompson was the director general of the BBC, where he came under fire multiple times for the pro-Israel bias he imposed on the British state broadcaster. In 2005, he held meetings in Jerusalem with then-Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon for the reported aim to build bridges with the country's political class, immediately after which he removed BBC correspondent Orla Guerin from Jerusalem following accusations of anti-Semitism made against her by the Israeli government. In 2009, he was hotly criticized for choosing not to air the Disasters Emergency Committee Appeal for Gaza, and in 2011, he presided over the decision to censor the lyrics Free Palestine from a performance by rapper Mick Wrighthouse on BBC Radio Extra. This is the sort of person who gets hired to multiple executive positions in multiple highly influential Western media platforms. If you've ever wondered why it looks like the Western press function in pretty much the same way as the state propaganda services in the autocracies the West proudly sets itself apart from, this is why. The corporate media are owned and controlled by plutocrats who have a vested interest in preserving the status quo power structure upon which their kingdoms are built, and state broadcasters like the BBC have the same interest for the same reason. They decide who the executives of those outlets will be, and those executives make policy and hiring decisions which cause the outlet to function in a way that is indistinguishable from state propaganda. These are the people who've been pulling the wool over the eyes of the mainstream public and manipulating the masses into thinking, speaking, working, consuming, and voting in ways that serve the interests of the ruling power structure. In this way, they are able to ensure that revolutionary opposition to that power structure remains a fringe minority position, even as that power structure wages wars, sponsors genocides, destroys the biosphere, and keeps everyone poor, sick, and stupid. Our world will never see the revolutionary changes it desperately needs until the people begin using the power of their numbers to force those changes to happen. 
and the people will never start using the power of their numbers to force revolutionary change as long as they are being manipulated by propagandists into accepting the status quo. Our task, therefore, as people who love truth and desire a healthy world, is to begin waking the public up to the reality that everything they've been told about their society, their government, and their world is a lie, and pointing them toward true information about what's really going on. That's how humanity will awaken from its propaganda-induced coma to create a healthy world. One pair of eyelids at a time. This might sound like a slow-going project, but for every newly opened pair of eyes, there is one more voice who can help wake up the others, which means exponential growth is possible. This is how we move humanity into the light of truth and begin the shift toward a truth-based society. And we've got an advantage. The empire needs to use human beings to generate its propaganda. That's what we're seeing in CNN staff turning against their boss and reporting his malfeasance to another news outlet. As long as the empire depends on ordinary human beings to turn its gears and facilitate its horrific atrocities, there's always the possibility that the next pair of eyes to open will be someone on the inside.